and telling you how to live. I will share with you what I believe is the will of God, but you have to have faith. That which is not of faith is sin. In other words, you have to be convinced that's obedience to God. So here we have revealed in Daniel, oh, those last three feasts, let me say that. The Feast of Trumpets, they've extended to two days because the new moon is hard to declare. And just so that Jews wouldn't make a mistake, they put it over two days because no man knows the day or the hour. So they extend the Feast of Trumpets, I believe is the rapture. That he's gonna proclaim and we're gonna to go to be with him, just like that explosion, however it's gonna look, I don't know. It seems like the world has been so set up, so set up, they're already into extraterrestrial stuff, they're into all, they, they really are being set up for the greatest deception ever. But for you and me, if we're ready, we're gonna be caught up together with him, as it says, and the Thessalonians were commended for their, understanding of the end times. God, and Paul corrects him a little bit. What revelation? After the, 10 days after the Feast of Trumpets is the Day of Atonement. That's the day that the Jews believe all their sins are totally wiped away for the whole year. That's why they're in this kind of Lent season right now and it's a good time to deal with, and deal with them because, well, the Jewish people are funny too. There was a friend that we knew that uh, when the air conditioning broke on a person's house on the Sabbath or, or popped a circuit, the Jewish person would come over to their house and say, can you go over to, uh, you know, turn on my air conditioning? Because they couldn't. We saw Sabbath day elevators. Those are elevators that go to every other floor and there's one that goes to the even, one that goes to the odd, so that the person who's on the Sabbath who doesn't do any work, the Jewish mentality, they'll get into the one that will stop eventually at their floor so they don't have to push a button and uh, disobey the Sabbath. It's interesting too, during leaven, when they were to take all the leaven out of their house, what they did is they took it to a Gentile friend. And then after the Feast of Leaven, seven days, they go get their leaven back. Oh man, talk about, you know, but they're no different than you and I. We're always looking for a, for a corner on God, like we can outsmart God somehow. I can do this or that and God's just going to let me get away with it. It ain't going to happen. So in the book of Revelation, oh, and then the, the tabernacles will happen. And tabernacles is a wonderful feast. It has seven days and then the eighth day is a great day of the feast, I believe, is the millennial reign and the marriage feast of the Lamb. But I don't understand it all. I just keep studying it. I keep reading it. Amen. In this case with Daniel, he was given authority. It was revealed that he was given authority, glory, sovereign power, all people over all peoples, nations, men of, men of every language, and they worshiped him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away. His kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. Whose kingdom were we talking about? Jesus. Jesus' kingdom. Yeah. It's going to last forever. When does this happen? Verse 18 says, but the saints, who are the saints? Can I have somebody that's a saint? Raise your hand. Are you sure of that? Yeah. Well, if your name was Bernard, would you still say you were a saint? Yes. Then you're St. Bernard. Amen. <laughs> but the saints of the highest one, I love those kind of words for our Lord. He is the elative, I think, how do you say that one? Elative superlative. Meaning he's not the best of all. He is the unique one that is above all. There is no, I had a vision or been taking the visions I've been reading and looking at the Lord through the visions of Ezekiel and just praying and, and imagining and picturing stuff, you know. And I was thinking, man, when, you know, we don't have an idea of how great is our God. We don't know how great is our God. 
we have no concept of it, you know. Even the greatest experience you have that would just bring a, a good kind of fear, whether it's an ocean, a, a firestorm, an earthquake or whatever, nothing's compared to the greatness of the Lord. He is great, or some big, you know, standing up over, you know, the Grand Canyon out on that glass thing. <laughs> I kept looking, and that horn was waging war with the saints and overpowering them. I know there's a spiritual battle going on, and I know that that battle is not only for you, for your family, for our nation, for the world. We are in the midst of one of the greatest battles, but we have the greatest God and the greatest power. Amen. Amen. Until is the word. Remember I said at the beginning, the word until. Until the Ancient of Days came, and a judgment was made in favor of the saints of the Most High. And the time came for the saints to do what? Yes. When is that to happen? Yeah. Now, you and I, I told you this message has a twofold to it, like a paper gets folded twice. We have what's taking place here on earth, and then we do have the final where we rule and reign with Him. This part we're sure of. This part here, we're not doing. We're not possessing the kingdom, the promises of God. The Bible says until the Ancient of Days came. Did Jesus come? Did Jesus come? Yes. And a judgment was made, as it says, that he just openly displayed and just, just thrashed or crushed the enemy under his feet. Until is a very important word. The word until is like the difference between the cross of Jesus. In other words, before the cross, I was a sinner. But after the cross, I was a saint. Until the Ancient of Days came. Until the King came. Until the Lord Jesus came. We were lost. <coughs> we were dead. It'd be like this. The word until is used in the Jordan. Before the Jordan, I was in the wilderness. But now after the Jordan, I am in the promises of God. Amen. It says, until the Ancient of Days came, and a judgment was made in favor of the saints of the Most High. And the time came for the saints, then the time came for the saints, and the time came. Are we going to die and go to heaven and read? Is this the finale for us? Is this the great moment of the church? Is this the best of the best? Are we at the final battle? And this is our fight. We're going to get there. We're going to go, what happened? We haven't even begun to fight. Until, well, on this side of until, the horn was waging war with the saints and overpowering them. But then, on this side of the verse 22, when the time arrived, when the saints took possession of the kingdom. It's time for you and me to take authority over the enemy. It's time for you and me to learn to walk in the power that we've been given, the dynamite power. On the side of the horn was overpowering them, but on this side, we've been given dominion, glory, and a kingdom. I'm experiencing that glory. I said, I'm beginning, tasting, but I'm experiencing that peace. I'm experiencing that presence of the Lord. When I do the songs, I put in my heart and go, Lord, I don't want to just sing. I want the presence. I want to sing till the glory comes down, or I want to, I don't want to out-sing everything. I want to, I want to experience what the Bible talks about. I want to receive and walk in the kingdom and possess it forever. The Bible says, He who shall speak pompous words, the horn, against the Most High. He shall persecute the saints of the Most High and shall intend to change times. He's doing that right now, folks. He's changing history. He's doing everything he can. He is deceiving. He is the great deceiver. And he's changing the law. People believe whatever they think is right in their own eyes. It, this is happening now. The spirit of Antichrist is at work. But the Bible says then, say then. Then. 
Amen. The saints shall be given into his hands? No. For a time and a time? No. Then we're going to experience the power and the anointing of God. At that time, yeah. There was a certain period that he was allowed to do certain things like he did to Job. But now we are walking in a whole different anointing. But the court shall be seated, and they shall take away his dominion to consume and destroy it forever. That is the battle plan. That is what's about to happen. They had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged. Why did it say that about these demons and these evil spirits? Because God was going to deal with them. He was going to deal with them. He says, and God said, you have lived on the same planet, and you will be tormented by the very people that you tormented. Just like a police officer is put into the same jail as with somebody he's incarcerated. The enemy is going to be dealt with. The Bible says in Genesis that he would bruise the heel, but we would crush him yes. through Jesus Christ. It says in Romans, we're going to crush Satan under our feet. It's time to do some crushing. Amen. The Lord said to the devil, before I throw you in the lake of fire, here's going to be your first punishment. I'm going to put you in the middle of a people you tormented, and I'm going to take away your power. And this fulfills Genesis 3.15, which says, And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall crush his head. We are in the point where the power of God... You know how frustrated. When are we going to rise up? What's it going to take, you know, for us to just get totally in, totally passionate for the Lord? Then the sovereignty, power, and greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven will be handed over to who? The saints, the people of the Most High. His kingdom will be an everlasting kingdom, and all rulers will worship and obey him. That will be us. Again, the question is when. Here's what we know. The Ancient of Days has come. Judgment is passed in favor of the saints. The time arrives for the saints to take possession of the kingdom. Then sovereignty, the dominion, and the greatness of all the kingdoms under the whole heaven will be given to the saints of the Most High God. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, speaking of the rich man, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. But he said, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God to other towns, Jesus said, because that is why I was sent. And he sent them out to preach what? The kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Seek first the kingdom of God, and these things will be given unto you. Do not be afraid, little flock, for your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of heaven or God unless he is born again. Jesus answered, and I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and of the Spirit. And he, after his suffering, he showed himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs, Jesus did, that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about, say it, the, the kingdom, kingdom of God. God. But when they believed Philip as he preached the good news of the, say it, kingdom, the kingdom of, God. of God, and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Paul entered the synagogue and spoke boldly there for three months, arguing persuasively about the kingdom, the kingdom. Of, God. Come on. The kingdom of God. For he has, he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom, kingdom of God. Of the Son he loves. I was going for you to say the kingdom of God. Therefore, since we received a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably, acceptably with reverence and awe. Until the engine of days came and a judgment was made in favor of the saints of the Most High, and the time came for the saints to possess the kingdom of God. Here's what it says in Colossians. When you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your sinful nature, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave all your sins. 
having canceled the written code with its regulations that was against us, 